So, in this particular section, what we're going to do is we're going to look at something called the internal control systems. So, we are going to control the business. Yeah, that's what I mean by internal controls. We're going to control the business in making sure that the business is operating effectively to continuously make money for the shareholders. That's what I mean by internal control systems. So, what we're going to look at today is what we're going to particularly focusing on seven aspects of the internal control systems. Firstly, we're going to look at the basic elements within the internal control systems. Of course, I'm going to use a mnemonic called CC RIM. So, firstly, I mean, we know that the internal control system is, exists because we want to use that system to help the company to continuously make money for the shareholders. But what are the components within the internal control systems we need to bear in mind? So firstly being the control environment. What do I mean by control environment is what I mean by we're going to control the environment within the company, mainly we are controlling the employees. We are going to embed the culture to the employee's mind so that when they are performing their roles, they are thinking about the internal controls when necessary, or all the times I should say. Secondly, is the control procedures in place in making sure that the business will not go wrong. For example, how can you make sure that the staff will not steal the money, especially for the cash share, will not steal money from the company? Maybe you're going to prepare the bank reconciliation statement. You're going to prepare that statement monthly to reconcile the bank balances, to making sure the bank balances is correct, making sure that employees will not steal money from the company, for example. Also, you're going to adjust those risks appropriately. You're going to manage that risk appropriately. Of course, we're going to detail the risk management into the next section. But just to give you an idea here is that every business will have its own risk appetite, including the attitude as well as the resources. So if your risk appetite is very high, so are there any ways that you're going to manage those high risk areas? Okay, so that's very important. So for example, for the high tech industries, the high risk area will be the technological risks, the technological change risks, especially. So are there any ways that you're going to manage that risks? Maybe you've got a team of experts within your company coming up with ideas daily to try to uh, produce the innovative products, for example, to, in order to deal with that risks. So that's your third aspect. The fourth aspect within the internal system is where we're going to look at something called the information system. We have to make sure that the information is useful to directors to make uh, decisions. Yeah? For example, the information should be timely. So, for example, you're in the manufacturing industry company. You're manufacturing a particular product and any of this failure rate of each of its product should be reported to the management timely so that the management can decide what to do. Maybe it's going to abandon this particular production line, maybe it's going to come up with new ideas to produce the new product because the existing product has a high failure rate, for example. But all of those bits and pieces, which is the CC re, is just the paperwork. You're going to put down to the paper, but you have to implement it as well, so that you're going to monitor it whether or not it's acting effectively. And in some of the circumstances, we also set up the visual blowing systems, for example, if anybody is in breach of the internal control systems within your organisation, I'm going to uh, try to tell this particular issue to a particular senior member, maybe within the audit committee. And hence, of course, we're going to look at the audit committee's roles in a second. The second issue within the internal control system we're going to look at is something called how we're going to make sure 
though there will be a sound internal control system. Of course, the way we're going to do it is where we're going to ensure there would be the sound CC ring. If there's a sound CC ring within your organization, for example, control environments is good, procedures is good, appropriate risk management, a, a good information system, and appropriate monitoring procedures as well, so that the internal control systems overall will be good as a result. And the third aspect we're going to look at is that we're going to how we're going to see how we're going to create a sound internal control systems. So the way we're going to do it is that we're going to continuously review the CC ring components. For example, there's a risk that the company is suffering. So for example, the liquidity risk. The company is running out of cash, it's over trading. So from this perspective, when we review the internal control system, we think that there's not enough appropriate procedures to deal with that risk so that we are going to come up with the new procedure in dealing with that liquidity risk for example borrow extra money for example looking for a venture capitalist maybe looking for my friend who's going to provide money to our company it's like a business angel so for example so how are we going to make sure that the internal system is good we're going to review that cc rim making sure that each of its components within the internal system is good Okay, so that's why we, that, that's how we're going to do it. And the fourth aspect we're going to look at is where we're going to look at the objectives of the internal control systems. Of course, the overall idea behind the objective of the internal control system is where we're going to minimize the business risks, the risk that the company will fail. And we can call it as the entrepreneurial risk if you like enterprise risk if you like that's the same thing it's the risk that the business will fail and the objective of that the business risk can be detailed into OFC firstly operational risk secondly financial risk and thirdly compliance risk OFC if you prefer. First, let's, look, let's have a look at the operational risk. For example, we are going to have the control systems in place in making sure that the staff turnover is low. We're going to keep that staff turnover as, as low as possible. The reason why we're going to do this is because the staff coming into a company, we spend lots of time and money into training that employee. But if this employee subsequently leaves the company and the new coming employee will replace the current employee, of course we'll have to spend extra money as well as time to, to train that particular new coming employee as well. So that, that, that would be a cost burden for the company. So that's why we're going to uh, I mean, have this internal system in place because we want to decrease the cost, we want to decrease the business risk for the company. So that, for example, the way we're going to do it is that, for example, we're going to cheat all those employees fair by trying to embed the internal control systems into their minds within the control environments. For example, everybody who is late for work has to be blamed. For example, the boss is late to arrive at work on time, not arrive at work on time. Of course, we're going to blame the boss as well. OK, so that's the operational issues. The financial issues, we have the control systems in place in making sure the financial risk is low. For example, the company, ensuring that the company is not over trading. What do I mean by over trading is what I mean by the company is expanding its businesses quite a lot. But at the same time, the company would decrease its profitability and also haven't got enough finance to finance its businesses. So the business may go bankrupt, may easily go bankrupt. So, so we're going to have these systems in place making sure that all those aspects with regards to the financing bit will be reviewed again and again and making sure uh, this will be dealt with properly for example and the third one is referring to as the compliance it's talking about whether or not the company will comply with the laws and regulations so we're going to have these systems in place 
in making sure that the business is complying with all of its laws and regulations in place. Otherwise, of course, the reputation of the business may be affected as a result. So that's the objective of the control systems. And the fourth aspect we're going to be looking at is where we're going to look at something called the limitation of the internal control systems. So I might say that putting the internal control systems in place in, within each of these components is not that perfect. The reason why this is the case is because a person, two persons and a paper. Those are the limitations of the internal control systems. For example, because of a human error, so the business is required to prepare the financial statements as well, uh, for example, so that the accountants will enter the figures yeah, into the systems, into its ERP systems. But what if when entering these figures, for example, I see the non credit registers figure is told what is to be 1,000, but we enter into into the system is to be 10,000. Of course, because of a human error, so that's the uh, the information is not correct within the organisation. Yeah, so this will be uh, the internal control system limitation failure. Also, maybe two employees would collude with each other. For example, the accountant and cat share may accountant with e may collude with each other. So. This person, these two persons, is not seg there's no segregation of duties between these two persons. They may collude each other with each other. One taking money, one recording the transactions, at the same time he's putting his money into their own pocket. And hence, of course, we've got the intelligence systems here to separate uh, those duties, for example. But it's very, very likely that if those two persons are so, you know, you know, familiar with each other, are so friendly with each other. Of course, they ca they can, of course, uh, you know, try to commit these frauds very very easily within the organisation. And also, where not the transaction will be updated. So one of the examples I normally give my students for the updated transaction is that traditionally you're receiving money from your customers face to face, but right now you're doing e-business, you've got your own website, you're receiving the money from the customer uh, using PayPal as an example. So here's the example. If the company, uh, the, here's the company, here's another party. So another party is providing the surveys to our company. Our company has to pay for the service using PayPal as an example. So that is the case because I haven't used the PayPal before, yeah? So that, of course, one of the requirements by a PayPal is that because you are providing a service and the PayPal does not support this particular service, yeah, because it does not require the shipment. And hence, of course, if there's any dispute between these two parties, of course, another party can get this money from our company very, very easily, get the money back although I have provided a service to them, but they can still claim that they haven't uh, you know, received the service at all. So, of course, because we have no experience of doing this particular issue, we haven't signed contracts, for example, and hence, of course, it would be very, very hard for us to deal with this particular issue subsequently. So that would be the limitation of the internal visual system we can look at. And the next of our thing we're going to look at is what I mean by the disclosure of the internal control system as well. So we're going to provide for certain disclosures, for example, uh, we're going to make sure that the board members, that the audit committee, as well as the internal auditors, we're going to disclose those three guys, yeah, those three entities, those three components there, making sure that they've got the responsibility in making sure that the internal control system is sound okay so that's very very important also we're going to require the ceo as well as the cfo to sign off to review the financial statements making sure they uh you know include their names 
Reviewing the financial statement, telling the shareholders that there's no problem whatsoever for those. And also, the external auditors would, would need to attest the internal control systems as well. The external auditors are the, you know, for the firms to be perfectly honest with you, they, uh, you know, come into the company to try to check whether or not the financial statements are showing true and fair view. Uh, also, they're going to attest, you know, sign the names, making sure that the internal control system is sound as well. So those three disclosures we have to make with regards to the internal control systems. And the final question we're going to talk about is what I mean by should we maintain this particular internal control systems? So, should we, inc you know, maintain the internal control system? Is what I mean by we're going to uh, referring to the costs as well as the benefits of doing those. Yeah, if the cost of holding a system is too high, it's outweighing the benefit. Surely, there's no point that we're going to uh, maintain this system. So that's the overview of the internal system.